Hey folks, it's Michelle Metzner and welcome to this video about CTML instructional design principles. Let's get started. Before we get going, let's look at today's learning objectives. After watching this video, you'll be able to define essential cognitive load, implement the segmenting strategy for managing essential cognitive load, define extraneous cognitive load, and implement the temporal continuity strategy for reducing extraneous cognitive load. Before we get started, let's review the basics of Richard Mayer's Cognitive Theory of Multimedia Learning, or CTML. CTML is a framework for understanding how instructional content derived from multimedia sources is processed by learners. According to CTML, there are three tasks that affect learners' cognitive resources, essential processing, extraneous processing, and generative processing. This presentation will address only essential and extraneous processing. Essential cognitive processing occurs when learners interact with material that is essential to understanding. This type of processing helps the learner visualize the material in the working memory and is often a result of the learner being challenged by the material. Now to maximize learning, essential processing must be well managed. So there are three principles that manage essential processing, segmenting, pre-training, and the modality principle. Let's take a look at segmenting. In segmenting, the material is broken down into manageable sections, and learners control the pace of their interaction with the lesson. This allows them to get a firm grasp of one part of the material before moving on to the next. And you can see this in the images here. The image on the left shows the first aspect of sales letter format. The learner clicks the continue button when they're ready, and the second aspect is revealed in the middle image. This process continues until all aspects of the sales letter format are revealed at the learner's own pace. So that was essential cognitive processing. Now let's take a quick look at extraneous cognitive processing. Unlike essential processing, extraneous cognitive processing often occurs when a lesson contains information that is not pertinent to the point of the lesson. This causes a drain on the working memory and often occurs when poor instructional design has been employed. While essential processing must be managed, extraneous processing must be reduced. According to Mayer, there are five ways to reduce extraneous processing. The coherence, signaling, redundancy, spatial contiguity, and temporal continuity principles. Let's take a look at the temporal continuity principle. The temporal continuity principle suggests that on-screen narration should match what is being shown on the screen. As you can see in the example, the closed captioning is discussing the gargoyles on the outside of this structure, when the video being shown is clearly that of the inside of the structure. This is an example of a violation of the temporal continuity principle. Okay, so that was a quick rundown of essential and extraneous cognitive overload. Remember, as instructional designers, we should be mindful to uh, take advantage of the segmenting, pre-training, and modality principles in an effort to manage essential load. At the same time, we should design lessons in ways that reduce extraneous load by employing the coherence, signaling, redundancy, spatial contiguity, and temporal continuity principles. If you have any questions, please email me at michelle.metzner at write.edu and I'll be happy to answer them. Until next time.